Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. As you might already know that we have recently bought our first home in Calgary in 2024. If you are getting to know about this just now, no worries. Please watch our previous video where Harshita has shared how we actually made that decision last year in December. So coming back to today's topic, I will be sharing a step-by-step -step guide of buying a real estate property here in Canada for all of you who are new to this whole process just like we were a year back. Don't worry, it will be a smooth ride and also Harshita is going to share the same video in Hindi as well for all our viewers who are requesting the same content in Hindi. Buying a home in a foreign country is not something that everyone does or at least thinks of doing well in advance. Same was the situation with me as whenever I thought of owning a home in Canada, when I came here as an international student, it was just a dream. But after I started my job and started earning, it was very clear to me that wasting my money on an ever rising rent, especially in Toronto, is not going to help me save enough money for my financial future, let alone my family's well-being. So I started watching a lot of YouTube videos and reading a lot of online articles to understand why investing in real estate market in Canada is so crucial for everyone who has big dreams and want to succeed in Canada. I am not saying that it is the only way which will help you make financial gains. Obviously, a lot of people would rather invest their money in stocks, bonds, or they would like to grow and build their businesses. But yes, if you do your research well, take a calculated risk along with some favorable market conditions on your site, any small investment in real estate could give you 25 to 30 percent returns in three to five years. So if you are also someone who has been working and saving their money to invest in real estate, this video is going to be really informative and exciting. So let's go through these five steps. Step number one, understand your needs and wants. Needs and wants are two completely different things. Let me give you a simple example. Seeing so many videos on YouTube that every new immigrant is buying a detached 4-5 bedroom home with a front lawn and a backyard, I also felt like, I, why can't I have this? I should also buy a big house in Canada. Now this is a want. Now let's think practically. I am still relatively new and have just 3-4 to four years of work experience here in Canada. It's just me and whom my wife who are here and my parents are currently back in India with no final plans of permanently staying in Canada. So my need is just a home with two bedrooms, one for me and my wife and another for my parents whenever they want to visit me here in Canada or if they decide to permanently stay here. So this is what I actually need, a two bedroom apartment, townhouse or a detached house which has a mortgage payment significantly lower than what I am paying for my apartment, which I had rented in Toronto downtown. So the clearer picture you have as to what you and your family actually needs rather than just following what everyone does, you should always be very specific whenever you decide to enter the real estate market. Step two, affordability assessment. This is also a very crucial step and you need to be crystal clear as to how much mortgage you can actually afford comfortably without downgrading your lifestyle just to make ends meet. It shouldn't be the case that you buy something so expensive that all your income is now going into mortgage and you don't have enough money to save or spend to enjoy your life, travel and have fun. Well, if you're thinking, how will I know how much I can afford easily in today's market when there is high inflation and high interest rate? It's very simple. There are a lot of free resources and bank websites which will give you a rough idea of how much loan bank is willing to give you and how much will be the monthly cost associated with the home ownership in Canada. I will share these links with you in the description sections below. Let me also give you a live demonstration of how you can do this analysis easily in just 5 to 10 minutes. Two of my favorite mortgage affordability calculators are either the TD Bank mortgage affordability calculator website and the other one is the ratehub.ca websites. So let's go to TD Mortgage Affordability websites. When you come here, the first thing that it would ask you is uh, enter the city that you are in. So suppose I uh, currently I am in Calgary, so I will type in Calgary, right? And 
I click next now it will ask me either you want to buy a house or a condo I will select house I will go next then it would ask me what is my annual income now this could be just my annual income or we could also add my spouse annual income so I am here taking an example of an average Canadian family both of them are earning a basic uh, annual salary of around fifty thousand dollars each so the total annual family home income becomes hundred thousand dollars then you click next then we have how much of a down payment are you willing to make so it could be any amount that you might have saved up till now so let's for a starting point say twenty five thousand dollars each of you have saved so you have around fifty thousand dollars as, as down payment now let's click next again then how much is the monthly expense do you have now it is the expense like groceries transportation child care insurance shopping etc etc so let's say it's just two of you or maybe you have a child so you might have a total <coughs> expenditure of around three thousand dollar on a monthly basis now it will ask me next question which is either do you have any car loans other loans leases line of credit or any credit card payments that are left so I would say no but ideally you might have some kind of a car loan so you could add that figure so in for this example let's just say I do not have any kind of loan now if you click see your results it would show you the total amount of purchase price that you could actually afford which is four hundred and twelve thousand dollars so TD bank would ideally give you this much amount as a loan so the total mortgage payment monthly would be around 2463 that you can see other housing costs might involve property taxes heating condo fee house maintenance etc etc which is around 664 so that's how you could actually calculate your total mortgage affordability now let's go to the rate hub website so this is the amount that we got from TD uh, website which is four hundred and twelve thousand dollars that becomes your purchase price now here uh, on the rate hub website you can go I am buying a home then it would ask you let's guess let's see what kind of rates that you get I have signed for an offer to purchase I am thinking about buying so let's say you are thinking about buying then it would ask you where do you live or where are you trying to buy a property how will you use this property it would be owner occupied definitely then what do you estimate your home price to be so let's take that same amount of four hundred and twelve thousand dollars and how much is your down payment so you say that I have around fifty thousand dollar as down payment okay then you click continue so that means that you have around twelve percent of down payment saved up now you could say your name so my name is Tanaj enter your phone number you could be add any random number right so that could be your phone number it could be anything and then you add your email ID so xyz at the rate gmail.com right it could be anything right and then you can click show me rates so this would show you the kind of lenders that are available so it is equitable bank canvas big six banks Canadian lender if you click show more it would show you TD Bank RBC CIBC BMO Scotia and the rates that are available right so these are the kind of rates that you could see that are available now this is the time you could also change different things so it could take a fixed rate you could take a variable rate you could take rate term as five years or three years right so that's how you can decide what kind of rates are currently available in the market and how much is the mortgage of affordability that you might have so I hope you get an overall understanding of what is required when you become a home owner how much amount of money that is needed and how your finances needs to be ready now you have a rough idea of how much loan you might get and how much mortgage you will have to pay monthly along with other costs like condo fee, utility bills, home insurances, etc. This exercise will really open your eyes and will also help you decide as to what is your real need and not what you might have been originally hoping to want instead. But trust me, it's really good. Now at least you know what you can actually afford and it will bring you a step closer to becoming a homeowner. Now let's talk about step three mining real estate listings 
If you notice, I have used an unusual word here, which is mining real estate listings. Well, it's quite purposeful as you would really have to spend hours and hours doing this until you find something which fits your need and financial situation in the current high inflation, high interest rate market in 2024. Easy way to do this is that I have shortlisted few websites on which you can actually browse and search various listings and get a lot of details in terms of not just prices, but neighborhoods, crime rates in the area, nearby schools and grocery stores, etc. Just let's take an example of how you can do this research. Let me share with you four websites that I really like. One is realtor.ca, the other is savemax.com, the other one is Royal LePage, and the other one, the last website that I really like is Livable. But Livable is mostly for new construction properties. So if you like to see some of the properties which are under construction or are newly built, then you can definitely log on to Livable and search for these properties. But the favorite one of mine is realtor.ca. So let's go there. So suppose I'm here on the home page and I want to search for a property. I will first type the name of the city. So right now I'm in Calgary. So I'll write Calgary. Now I can choose amount from different filters and select based on what I need. So suppose my purchase price, which is the minimum purchase price is around $200,000. So I can select that here. And the maximum purchase price for me is maybe $500,000. And my minimum requirement is a two bedroom and bathroom requirement is also one or two bit bathrooms, right? So now if I click search, I will be able to find all the properties which fall in the price range that I'm looking for and also meets my criteria of two bedrooms and two bathrooms. So now based on the map of Calgary, I can see based on Southwest, Southeast, Northwest and Northeast, all the properties that are available. Now I can select whichever property that I like to see so I can scroll down and let's see maybe this one, which is in the Southeast. It is priced at $289,000. It's 20300 Cranfield Common Southeast, right? Now if I click and see the photos, I can see the outside of the property, then the rooms, this is the hall area, I think, this is the kitchen, right? This is the dining area, living area. Then you have the two bedrooms, which is one, it has a washroom, the other bedroom, and it also has an attached washroom. Then there is a nice balcony outside. So yeah, I really like this property. Now if you go and scroll down, you will see that it is built in 2013. The property tax on this property is 1412. It's 921 square feet big, and it was posted just four hours ago, right? Now you can also see that the maintenance fee, which is a monthly fee that you need to pay for this apartment is $521. Now the best feature of this website is the calculator function, which I really like, because this will give you a rough idea of how much down payment you need to do so that you can basically afford the monthly mortgages on for, for this property. And you have multiple scenarios to choose from. You could do a 5% down payment, you could do a 10% down payment, 15 or a 20% down payment. And this would be the amount that you need to have for that. And then after removing that from the total purchase price, this would be the mortgage that you need to apply for, right? You can select the amortization period that you would either like to pay this amount by 25 years or would you like to pay this amount by 30 years? So that you can choose easily based on selecting the filters. And also you can find how much mortgage rate would be applicable when you're looking to purchase this property. So currently the mortgage rate could be anywhere between 5.2 to 5.5, right? So you could take 5.2, this could be 5.3, this could be 5.5, or suppose if you want to take even a higher interest rate, you could take 6% as your interest rate, right?
and based on these different interest rates and the down payment that you do you will be able to see how much will be your to total mortgage payment on a monthly basis you can also identify what would be the total cash needed other than just your down payment you need a land transfer tax but in Alberta it's zero so that's why it's here written as zero you could have to pay a lawyer fees to do all the documentation work for you and get all the approvals and legal documentation so that might be thousand dollars it could be a little higher as well but yeah thousand dollars is just the basic amount then this is the title insurance amount which is two hundred and ninety dollars so total cash required is fifteen thousand seven hundred and eighty five now if you do choose to do a home inspection it would cost you another three hundred to five hundred dollars and that's the appraisal fee which is three hundred dollars right now you can also select and see how much is your monthly expenses other than just your uh, mortgage payment so you would might have to pay utility bills you will have to pay property insurance you would have some kind of a phone which you might be using so you will have phone bills you will have cable and you might have internet as well at home right so if you include all that and your mortgage payment then your total monthly expenses would be around nineteen hundred dollars and this you can choose based on the scenario you select of down payment is it five percent ten percent fifteen percent or twenty percent right so this is a very good website to see all the properties that you might be looking at and all the expenses that might come across uh, based on the property that you choose to buy. Step 4. Finding a good realtor. This may sound a very easy and simple step, but you need to take extra care while researching a realtor who is empathetic to your needs and is still realistic and responsive in his approach. What do I mean by that you ask? Let me give you an example. When I was doing my research on YouTube and these websites, I came across four different realtors whom I, I was able to meet physically and had real time experience while visiting properties. You need to know this, that you do not have any foundations when it comes to realtors. So try to speak at, to as many realtors as you like, either virtually or face to face and if possible, meet them physically and see few properties with them. Even though you might not be immediately ready or for buying anything, at least you can meet few realtors and experience how they treat you. I myself spoke to at least 8 to 10 realtors, at least to understand how they interact with me and whom I can trust and build a long term relationship with. Now let's discuss four important characteristics for a realtor. A realtor needs to be empathetic and needs to understand your financial situation and your actual needs. He shouldn't just for the sake of his commission upsell you something that you can't really afford. A lot of realtors will try to push you to buy a very big house or a really expensive property. Please don't do that. Always think about what you can really afford. A realtor must be realistic. He should have an idea of where to look for the property which can be in your price range yet is still safe for your family and covers your basic lifestyle needs. For example, sometimes realtors try to show you properties which are very remote and are very old because the prices are su of such properties are a bit low. And the property owner is dying to sell because of issues with property or renters or something else. A realtor also needs to be responsive. He should always be highly responsive to your needs I'm not saying that realtors are not human and they should be available for you 24 seven. But yes, your realtor should always keep you updated with what is happening with the property you are interested in and should always inform you about any relevant information which you might have overlooked while viewing or researching about the property. In my case, I was able to find a really energetic and trustworthy realtor who was so helpful throughout the process that I was completely relaxed and yet informed about each and every minute detail about the property I was buying. And the entire process was seamless. He did some things out of his way to help me out. And when me and my wife were completely new to Calgary City, he and didn't even know anyone except our realtor. Link to his website and socials will be available in the description sections below. Step five is getting your finances ready. Well, of course, if you don't have enough money saved up or invested in right savings plans, 
which can be liquidated on time to make a purchase, it is going to be impossible for you to buy anything. Since you at least need 5 to 10% of the total purchase price as down payment, it's important that you have done your financial planning and savings well in advance. As per my personal experience, you need 10 to $15,000 extra other than your down payment and closing costs so that you can cover your moving and other expenses like buying some furniture or maybe purchasing a car as your property is not easily accessible through public transportation, etc. A lot of videos on YouTube have discussed this topic in detail. So I will just give you an overview here. In Canada, if you invest in RRSP, which is Registered Retirement Savings Plan, and FHSA, which is First Home Savings Account, you can use that money to pay for your down payment along with getting tax rebates for both. This tax return that you get every year can be reinvested again in both RRSP and TFSA till you have enough money saved up for your down payment. As FHSA was a relatively new scheme and was launched just last year in November, I was still able to invest 8,000 CAD in 2023 December and $8,000 in 2024 January, just two, three weeks before making my purchase so that I can get the tax return in 2024 and 2025 for the money invested. I'll be sharing a video on how to withdraw your RRSP and FHSA investments for your first home purchase in the next video. So please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any updates. Another important topic I wanted to touch base upon is finding a right mortgage agent. Choosing the right lender to be able to keep your mortgage payments affordable and still keeping your interest rates low is very important. For this, I also have a great website which will give you a rough idea of how much interest rates you can expect for which term and how much you will be your monthly mortgage payments. You can see based on your annual income, how much mortgage you will get and which lender is giving you good interest rates, which is affordable for you. Additionally, speak to your mortgage agent and get to know how much interest rate they are willing to give you based on your financials and then go with the lender which suits you the best. Thanks for watching this video till now. This is just the beginning. We will have a lot of videos discussing detailed process of how to buy a house in Canada in 2024. So please like and share our videos with your friends and family who might be interested in buying a property in your future. Thanks a ton for your support. Please ask us any questions you might have as first time home buyer. We will try our best to answer your questions. Until then, take care and bye bye.